Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. How are you guys doing? We got one of the top ranking UFC fighters in the world with us here on the Dean Show, Mirsad Bektic. When we come back, there was a component that is so neglected nowadays, especially since this component was an integral part in the past to making a complete martial artist. He was lacking in this area, but he has picked up the pace now, and it's helping to him to become a more complete martial artist. And God willing, he'll have more success in life now. We're going to be talking to UFC fighter Mirsad Bektic about this missing component that he's gained now here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing very good. Let's start off with, you know, this greeting that we gave each other. You know, many people, when they hear this greeting, you know, this is because the Dean Show is uh, dedicated to dispe dispelling many of the myths, but many people don't know that we just wished each other peace. Yeah. It's a greeting of peace, and we're people of peace wish each, wish, wishing each other peace. Mm -hmm. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. How you been? Man, alhamdulillah, things are getting better. Uh, I'm here with you guys, uh, learning more about Islam, learning more about... Uh, yeah, just everything in general, just uh, lifestyle, yeah, and how good things can be, yeah. Uh, if you just uh, take the responsibility of doing your own research and uh, applying it, yeah, and being being diligent about it, yes, not just about Islam, but how Islam can make you diligent in so many other in other ways mm -hmm. about how you treat people, about life, and how you go about your life. Mm -hmm. So, tell me. So you're you're an U, UFC fighter, yes, ranked in the top uh, 15. ten, fifteen. Yeah. And what motivated you to to and and how did you end up getting into the UFC? Well, I mean, I ended up getting the UFC. I was seven and zero. Um, I moved to Florida when I was twenty, about twenty years old, training there. I uh, went professional in two thousand eleven, uh, and I I got a text. Hey, do you want to fight this guy? He's 11 and 0. Uh, trains with Johnny Hendricks at the time, and I said, "Man, it's like a dream come true." You know, it was kind of at that moment I was, I was almost starting to go on a different mindset of life, mm -hmm. and I got that. And six weeks later, I was making my UFC de debut. Yeah. So how long you've been fighting in the UFC? How long now? I've been in the UFC specifically. Uh, since 2014. 2014? So, yeah, three and, years. And, and when's your next fight? Uh, I hope it's uh, December 30th. So that my current management is working on yeah. getting that done right now. So you're in the same weight class? Is it uh, is it uh, true as with Conor McGregor? Yes, he was at 145. He's at 55 currently. Yeah. But technically, he's I think he's still a champion at 45. But... Uh, is Aldo is Aldo was a chap at one forty that was. belt that he has that's the one forty five belt. Well, he had the interim belt. Yeah, and then so UFC made Connor vacate the one forty five belt because you have to yeah. over a certain period of time you have to defend it. Uh -huh. So then Aldo fought Max Holloway for the actual UFC belt, and Max Holloway beat him. He he beat. Him. Yeah, he beat Aldo. Okay, so, so now, now Max Holloway is the champion. Yeah, okay, Matt, Max Holloway's the champion. So what belt does uh, bring us up to speed? What belt now, again, does uh, Connor? Connor. He's so he has that 155 belt. 155 belt. belt. Yeah. That's the one that he beat, who did uh, he? Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez, okay. Yeah. I, so he had, okay, now I understand. Yeah. He vacated that one because yeah. he was waiting too long. Yeah, right? well, he, UFC just like, hey, boom. He, because yeah. he, was, he should have been defending the belt, right? Yeah, I think it's over if you don't defend it within a year. Okay, you I got gotcha. you. So you would qualify, that's his original weight. So you would actually qualify, you're in the same weight class yeah, as Yeah, we're in the same weight class. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so maybe that's a future matchup, it potentially. Could be. It yeah, could be, huh? I mean, I plan on, I mean, I'm in it to be the best. And, yeah. Uh, you know that's you know I've made one dream come true. I'm in the UFC. Yeah. Uh, now it's uh, about finishing it. Uh huh. And do my best to do it. And yeah. I'm sure if I get there, and when I do get there, I'll meet him and if he's around. Yeah. We always say Inshallah, God willing. Yeah, God huh? willing, Inshallah. And that was one of the things that I did. I I did a uh, 
a sh show not too long ago when uh, Khabib was supposed to fight. I think um, uh, you have you ever Ferguson. met Khabib? Uh, yes, I actually made my UFC debut. Yeah, with him in 2014. Yeah, and we had a. I've always been kind of nonchalant, and chill. Uh, you know, your cousin is always telling me like, "Hey, man, you need to take pictures yeah. with these guys. You need to <laughs> take pictures with your boss." Yeah. But I've always been like, "Okay, just like yeah. normal to me." Uh, it's not thing like crazy fanatics yeah. for me, but I do realize how important it is uh, to be more like appreciative of those things. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I met him in uh, 2014, and we were actually supposed to fight together uh, March of this year, March 4th. On the same card. Yeah, he was uh, supposed to fight Ferguson. Yeah. And I was on there, and then after the fight, uh, his manager was FaceTiming me. Uh, and I spoke to Khabib and his manager. Who's his manager? I, I, Ali. Ali? Yeah, so yeah. I, was, I, was, I was FaceTiming with those guys. He was telling me about my fight and, yeah. I did a video. We did a program talking about uh, some of the things that people would perceive as being odd. Like, for instance, uh, some of the things that, you know, he has said. For instance, after he'll finish a fight. Alhamdulillah, everything God gave me. Thank you, God. Everything God gave me. He'll say, and, and this is kind of the bridge the cap where people mm -hmm. are like, what is he saying? What is he doing? Uh, for instance, after he'll finish the fight, he doesn't point to himself. Mm -hmm. Just like, like you, after mm -hmm. you finish your fight, you point up above. Yeah. By submission, due to Kimura, Habib, the Eagle, Nurmagomedov! So he's, he's uh, directing that attention to the one who gave him the ability to throw the punch, right? To, to be it. there is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yes. So he's saying, not me, up, up. Okay. And he's thank saying, you. alhamdulillah. So thank people are like, you. what does that mean? He's saying, thank God, yeah. thank God, right? Yeah. And then he'll fall. Another thing we prostrate. talk about, he'll prostrate. Mm -hmm. And people are like, was he kissing the ground? Yeah. No, he's thanking, again, the creator. And m many people don't know that Jesus, peace be upon him, he also fell on his face when he prayed. And he I, didn't do, I didn't know that either. Yeah, hey, it's in the Gospel of Matthew 26, 39. And it says, and he went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed to who? Himself? No, he prayed to the creator. Yeah, yeah. So this is the same thing that he was doing. And we trying to bridge that gap. And then I actually invited him. I said, look, you've been on this show, that show, the area Wana, we, what's the guy's Ariel name? Hawani. And Hawani yeah. show. You need to come on the Dean show. show yeah. Like our brother here. So God willing, inshallah, we'll have a uh, Khabib with us. Uh, tell me, you also, you had a, in one of your fights, you had a t-shirt on. Yes, sir. And it said, uh, don't, uh, never, never, forget. For, never forget Srebrenica. Your background is from Bosnia. Yes. Srebrenica. Can you tell us why you wore that shirt? What, what, uh, what was the, uh, the um, motivation essence. behind that? The essence behind it? Uh, yeah, the essence uh, behind it was I am from Srebrenica. Uh, the reason I am in America is because the Srebrenica, uh, Bosnian Serbian War, and uh, the essence of it was to show people that I, I'm from there and that I love my people and I love my town and that I haven't forgot about them and nobody else should either. And it's not so much in a in a negative way where which I think a lot of people do, like, hey look, never forget this. Remember us, look what you did to us. But it's like it's more of a concept of this is where I'm from. This did happen. Uh for people to look into it more and to be like, Oh wow man, they they went through a lot and that shouldn't happen again. And um, it's, it's almost like a, in a loving way. It's not so much in a yeah. point fingers at somebody. Absolutely. Like I don't even think about uh, the Serbian army guys or whoever was involved in the, in the massacre, mm -hmm. the genocide. I don't even think about them. It's just more about you know losing my family that I lost and my grandmother. You lost a lot of your family yeah, members yeah, there? Definitely. Many people don't know that that was the greatest genocide after World War II yeah. in Europe. People don't know about that. You had just in Srebrenica it, that it was, what was it, like almost... Close to 8,000. Uh, 8, around 8,000 innocent in little men, town. women, I mean, uh, innocent civilians were yeah. killed. They were just, it was an ethnic cleansing that was yeah. happening and people don't know about it. And, this, and you're actually from that. I just came back from, from Bosnia and I was trying to, I was, uh, uh, that was on my, my uh, places to visit. I didn't actually get a uh, chance to go, but I wanted to visit there. But uh, this is where, but I got the next best thing. Someone who's actually oh, from yeah. Srebrenica. That's where you were born. Yes. 
Yeah, Connor, he's always like, you know, representing Ireland. Ireland. Yeah. So uh, there's nothing wrong, obviously, to know your roots. Yeah, and as I get older, I mean, now I'm 26, but uh, you know, when you're a little younger, you, you know, we came to the United States, eight years old, nine years old, and speak no English, and you were raised in a different culture, so you don't really, um, sometimes you kind of forget, or not you don't forget, but you don't really take acknowledgement of what actually happened. Uh, you don't do your research, and... You gotta really see what happened and to know yourself and where you came from and why you believe or your why your town or people believe what they believe and uh, so just kind of really knowing the essence of everything and and taking pride in it. Yeah. And I I'm still learning. Uh -huh. I'm still learning about that. I'm still learning about my people's religion and and my town and my country and just uh, growing with it. Yeah. And, yeah, this is something that also, I mean, we have uh, that also in common that my my family, you were born there. My family's from first generation. They actually were, they came over about 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I thought, hey, there are so many uh, other tragic events. You know, any, any, any event where you have innocent people who are being massacred, killed, there should be awareness created about it, right? So it doesn't happen again. Yeah. And this is one of those events that uh, it's sad to say that uh, many people, even even Bosnians, have kind of forgotten about it. So I thought, and I did a, a particular program, people can watch it on our channel, is called the, the, the Bosnian Muslim Genocide. And it talks about we don't, because nowadays many people, and you being also a Muslim practicing, you know, uh, Islam, many people right away... You know, they link as soon as you say Muslim, the synonym right away terrorist, right? Ridiculous. Oh, get How away do you? From us. Huh? <laughs> like get away from us. Yeah. yeah. So now I did this show and I said, look, we don't blame Christianity mm -hmm. for what Milosevic and Karadzic did. Mm -hmm. And they were Christian, mm -hmm. right? But we don't go ahead and now exploit this and say, look, this is radical Christianity. Yeah. That doesn't work like that because they might have did whatever they did, you know what I mean? And they were practicing Christians, but we know that Christianity doesn't preach that. The yeah. same way Islam doesn't, doesn't preach ah. a lot of violent acts that people uh, make it out to be. But what? how do you feel when you see things like, for instance, there's too many to list, but one major event just happened. It was the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. This, mm. this lunatic, in he Vegas. went in Vegas. He, he ended up, uh, what was it, killing almost 60 people, injuring yes. almost 500, yeah. something like that. He didn't say Allah Akbar, no. so it's, he's not a terrorist, right? Allah no. Akbar means many people, if you don't know, it means... That was Praise another God. thing that we, we talk about. Khabib says Allah Akbar, it means God is the greatest. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Yeah, yeah. Yes, praising God, God is the greatest. So uh, it's not a war cry. Now he didn't. Uh, ha he didn't. Pa we usually say if you pass by a Muslim, you had lunch with a Muslim. Somehow you're connected to a Muslim. He's it, it's terrorism. Mm -hmm. He's converted to it. And, and it was just amazing. They have these. They sneak in these headlines. I don't know if you saw it. Like ISIS claims responsibility. He converted to Islam six months ago. <laughs> people don't. And 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 people don't read the rest to uh, see that this is just a bogus. You know, this is like fake news. Yeah. But they Ratings. see that they, exactly. They see that headline. They think okay, he's a Muslim. Mm -hmm crazy what do you well, how do you feel when you see your religion maligned like this in the media uh i mean i think people just got to do their own research yeah just because it, it's it's not i mean i i, I don't even pay attention to it mm -hmm. because it's it's bogus yeah it's like man anybody with common sense knows that you would think anybody with common sense would know that uh, the religion has nothing to do with it and the fact that this certain event had that it was even directed towards Islam. It's just funny to me. It's like a joke. Like, come on, like, yeah, really, like, it's come on. It's stupid. Like, yeah. so really, it makes you even want to not even watch that channel that news is on, uh, because you have so many other KKKs, all these groups that are like you said, Christian people. They practice uh, Christianity, mm -hmm. but we don't. We know. We know that. Christianity has nothing to do with the KKK. That just because somebody says they are one thing and they act in a certain way doesn't make everybody that way. Yeah. And uh, it's a it's a joke. And now we don't really. I mean, Vegas. What happened maybe two weeks ago, a week ago? It's already out the news. You don't hear much mm, about it already. Yeah. Uh, is it because it wasn't 
part of Islam, um, maybe. Mm -hmm. You don't want to... There's no ratings on it. Yeah. yeah. It seems like Islam has that... Like, you can point a finger at somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what made him do it. <laughs> yeah. The book made him do it. And, and that's the double standards. That yeah, we, double we standards. Yeah, those double standards is kind of the hypocrisy there. But um, uh, people like yourself now, people like Khabib, people who... Um, who are out there in the spotlight mm -hmm. now do have a, a big responsibility mm -hmm. now, yeah. even though some might shy away from it. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to take you to this clip, and I'm going to show you someone mm -hmm. who didn't shy away from it. He's a great example for every celebrity Muslim, every human being, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, but especially those nowadays who are being targeted because now many people uh, uh, who are Muslim, unfortunately, they're, they're being dehumanized, and many are... You know, hiding under rocks. You mm -hmm. know, scared to say they're Muslim, uh -huh. right? But nowadays, you know, uh, especially we need to stand up and show really what Islam is to live Islam and to show that we're human beings like the rest. You I'm follow proud. me? And we're proud of that. And I'm going to take you to this clip, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Another bath, another shower, clean my mouth, pray, and at five in the morning, this goes on. And when I'm right, now I didn't do that for the first Frazier fight, nor the first Norton fight. Really? No, sir. My head got big and I started thinking it was my training camp and my boxing ability that kept me where I was at and God punished me and he gave me a good whooping. He broke my jaw in the second fight and he got me whooped and knocked down in the Frazier fight and I realized I wasn't that great after all. So I had to get not only together physically but spiritually. For this fight I've prayed every day for five days, five times a day for the past uh, uh, four months and everything is perfect. And if Allah's with me, it ain't no way no man can win. No way. That's deep, huh? Yeah. And he went from being the most despised man to the most loved man. He's a Muhammad Ali Muslim American hero. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Muhammad yeah, Ali. Wow. They love him. And he was unapologetically Muslim. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. He was a humanitarian. He was a peacemaker. He was a person who was bridging that gap of misunderstanding between the people and he filled that role that now it's left to many people like yourself yeah. people like Khabib other Muslims who are out there who are in the spotlight what do you think when you hear someone like him speak when, from this little clip uh, man I feel like that's somebody I can definitely relate to uh, in, a, in a lot of ways uh, you know I was I was undefeated I remember I was undefeated also and um, before that fight, when I tore my ACL, I came back and I was praying, praying. I didn't. I did every prayer every day. Went to mosques at night, and then I remember before my last fight too. I kind of got away from it, and I kind of questioned it sometimes. But it was like, no, nah, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. And just uh, just hearing him say that now, it's like, oh God, maybe just woke me up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I do think differently now about a lot of things, um, you know, priority wise and life wise spirituality wise uh, so I definitely relate to him t in a lot of ways besides uh, be Muslim just just mentally yeah. uh, and just uh, how proud he is and in, in it is gives you hope you see the confidence yeah, that he had when God is with it, you yeah. there's no man that can stop yeah. you right yeah. and he was missing that he talks about how he got his jaw broke he mm. thought it was my training camp yeah. it was me and, ma and you'll see many of these many fighters you'll see many of them they'll, they'll be they'll pump the chest and it's like it's all mm. and that spiritual component for many it's people huge. is missing it's huge in talk, life in general in life in general can you talk about that yeah definitely I mean I've always been spiritual uh, because in life, I guess when I was growing up, I really didn't have that discipline. So once I started uh, getting more into reading and just looking for that guidance, and I found that through spirituality, uh, it was kind of like my father. Uh, and now that's what disciplines me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I do a certain way, when I do certain things, uh, I have these verses and these things I read in the Quran or in that. Uh, Prophet Muhammad's hadith, uh -huh. uh, you know, they kind of checked me like, oh, well, you read this and he did it this way. So it's just a, it's a book of discipline, and of guidance, and that's what it gives me, and mm -hmm. I'm very spiritual, and it's, I don't know why I can't be like cer a certain athlete, and I've come to a point where, is, where I'm, I'm not comparing what they're doing and doing it a certain way as they are. I am 
different and this is what's gonna be good for me and I just come to accept that yeah and that you know what worked for them might work for them it might, it might not work for me so I just gotta keep doing it how I'm doing it yeah and this is I, I believe this is a part of that yeah many people and this is what motivated me you know and this is again just to, uh, because there's obviously a lot of misconceptions about Islam and Muslims. And that's what motivated me to start the Dean Show, mm -hmm. going on almost 11 years, 600 plus episode, is showing that there's so many commonalities and that people would just sit, listen, and learn with an open mind. You know what I mean? Because there's a great statement that goes something like this, that for the mind to work, it has to function like a parachute. It has mm -hmm. to be open. Yeah. And the greatest form of ignorance is to reject something you know nothing about. Yeah. And sincere people who sit... And they make the first the human connection, right? They meet Mirsad, mm -hmm. right? He's a Muslim, practicing Muslim. He's trying his best. You know, mm -hmm. we all make mistakes mm -hmm. and whatnot. Well, all learning. of it. Yeah, we're learning. We're we're doing our best. But now, when they learn some of the basic things, for instance, just by the name Muslim, Muslim is simply like Jesus was one who submits to the will of God. That's what a Muslim is, right? Mm -hmm. And if to qualify the statement, if if a person has, if someone asks, "Are you a Muslim?" And, and I'll say to qualify that, do, do you mean someone who has submitted to the will of God, who's kind, merciful, just, and fair? Someone who won't hit on your wife mm -hmm. or, or, or rip you, try to rip you off, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's a Muslim. <laughs> if you got some twisted idea in your head, like what you've been seeing yeah. you know, in Hollywood, yeah. that's probably not, uh, that well, doesn't fit the description. Mm -hmm. So when these commonalities, you know, are, are shown, many people that kind of uh, uh, breaks down the walls, the barriers, you know, this deep love we have for Jesus, for instance, as a mighty messenger, yeah. his blessed mother. There's a chapter in the Quran named after her. You know what I mean? Yeah. And growing up, I didn't even know that. Uh, <laughs> right. When I was like a Muslim, I just said I'm a Muslim just because uh, that's where you grew up. Saying. Yeah. But then you get older and you learn these things. And like, wow, I didn't even know that. <laughs> Yeah, so these are the things that many yeah Muslims also like you, you, you who come from a background of Islam they don't know these things so that's what we're dedicated to to get this information out because sharing is caring you know mm -hmm. what I mean and then the people can judge for themselves but because ignorance is is something that is affected so many people that they're ignorant on these basic things of Islam and then they're bombarded by the media yeah you know the media is hitting them with you know uh, this terrorist attack they take some nut job and they prompt them up like he's an exemplary Muslim. The label, the, and then we we'll shy away from it. And I've done it before too. I mean, somebody asks you, "Are you Muslim?" Like, you kind of your confidence. You're like, oh, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> so that goes between the yeah, unapologetically yeah, Muslim and, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. apologizing like, like I am, yeah, but uh, yeah. not really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, that I'm going into it. Yeah, I'm more confident. I'm learning about it, and uh, yeah, it's kind of like getting on the mats. It right? is. If you know more jujitsu, you're confident in your jujitsu, mm -hmm. or you're 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 wrestling, or you mm -hmm. know you're you're fighting. Yeah, let's go. It's you know what I mean. Exactly. You can. Do, but if you're not confident, you're not living mm -hmm. it. You don't know how to express it. Then you. Uh, yeah. Uh, then yeah. you. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Then right. Definitely. Yeah. Because so, once sorry, because once you, uh, you are, you have a responsibility. Yes. I mean, I believe you have a responsibility. Yeah. So if, and I'm always practicing. So mm -hmm. it's a, uh, alright, cool. I have to, you know, remind myself sometimes, like, alright, cool. Well, this is how, you know, don't, you know, how to treat your mother, how to treet your brothers, how to, uh, just such pe treat people in general, and it checks you. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, that that that's deep. You know, when yeah. you you just mentioned how to, you know, uh, these these uh, qualities that many people I've had I've had interviews with people who, uh, when they've accepted, you know. Uh, Islam, uh, the parents of these young kids, mm -hmm. they would say, "I can sleep better at night. Mm -hmm. Now my child respects me better. You know, he's 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 a better all-around you know, human being." You yeah. follow me? Up. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of the qualities that Islam teaches: to be a better neighbor, mm -hmm. right? To be to be the best at whatever you do, uh, and not to harm even an animal there's a there's a, a beautiful statement by the prophet muhammad peace and blessing be upon him he said there's you know faith has 60 some odd branches the t the highest of which is to testify that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens mm -hmm. and the earth and muhammad is the last final messenger and the least of which is is to remove something harmful from the road 
Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I, I mean, so, it, you know, unless we started with peace, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about removing an obstacle from the road. That's, you know, so someone doesn't puncture your tire, slip, fall, hurt themselves. So, you know, these are the these are the fundamental uh, uh, fundamental beliefs of Islam, a uh, being of good, noble character and whatnot. Uh, so this is, this is just uh, amazing. Um, and what point in your life did you start taking life more serious in this aspect? Where did you started to contemplate and think, you know, What's my purpose in life? Yeah. Why am I here? I would say at uh, probably around age 17, 18. Yeah. Or probably early 17. You know, I, I, I was kind of tired of... I was looking for something like direction. And I wasn't happy about the way I was living my life. The, the way my friends around me were living their lives. And where everybody was, go where everybody was kind of going in the direction that they were going. Uh, so I, I was very motivated to do better in school and outside of school. And then once I found martial arts, uh, that kind of gave me that first set of guidance and purpose. And uh, you know, just moving down a few years later in Florida, you know, I just kind of, something was missing and I just feel it. I just wanted to hear something like, man, I remember hearing this a long time ago. I just pulled up some surahs, uh, passages, uh, if you want to call them American and just played it just just hearing it was just kind of soothing to me yes and uh you know then going out to the lo local you know driving having a car being able to drive to the local mosque uh and and look into getting the book and then reading the book and a oh, while wow, there's english translations yeah and uh then you know i met another mirsa who was a who was a professor also and then learning from him and it's been uh yeah ever since then it's been an uh, learning process sometimes you know you fall back on your like you say your certain prayers and but you kind of get back up and you have these reminders of you know why why it makes sense you know and why it's so good for you yeah for your life and for those around you uh and for everybody yeah so that's when around 23 is when it, when it started for me and again it's been uh it's been an uphill been an uphill learning process yeah that's the key i mean learning like yeah. and gaining that confidence from what you learn you know to and and and, and i've seen for myself personally it's 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 helped me definitely to be a better human being yeah. you know what i mean uh to to grow spiritually and and to grow um you know to be the better version mm -hmm. of, of myself and and um and m many people, uh, when I hear their stories, it does the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a it's a sense of respect right off the bat. Uh, yeah. You can connect to somebody right away. Yeah. And sometimes you'll do, do do something for them just because yeah, you know they're Muslim and and you kind of know what that stands for if you're you really know the truth behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're willing to go out of your way for somebody, mm -hmm. like for even strangers. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us uh, before we cut out. Um, you uh, plan on d visiting Bosnia anytime soon? Yeah. I just, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I plan to. I have so many different plans this year. Uh, some things got messed up, but I definitely 100% plan on going as soon as I fight this next fight, uh, which I'm sure it's gonna be December 30th. And I plan on going to Bosnia right after that in January, and then we'll see how long I'll stay there. I have my father there. I have my grandmother. Lots of family there, so it's been uh, way too long. Inshallah, God Almighty, uh, yeah, Allah, inshallah. Uh, you uh, reunite you with your your. Four, you haven't seen your father in, in ten years. I mean, uh, you see him FaceTime, but face, it's, it's yeah, it's not in person. Yeah. Yet. yeah. So God willing, you reunite with your family. I want to thank you very much for uh, being with us here on the Dean Show. No, thank you. Exactly. Thank you very much. Exactly. Hey, so. I appreciate it. And that was my brother and your brother Mirsad Bektic, UFC fighter. Very later to see him find that missing component, that spiritual component to make a complete and balanced human being. Many people are missing it. And we invite people to explore in and look into it to see what has brought that peace and contentment into his lives. The, the Muslim American hero who was unapologetically Muslim. Let me qualify that statement. Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all the messengers that the Creator sent out of, out of his love they were all Muslims. And the Muslim is simply one who has submitted to the will of God. Muhammad Ali, Muslim American hero, was unapologetically Muslim. And you see, he's loved till this day. Because a Muslim is someone who is morally upright. You don't have to worry about him trying to hit on your wife. 
ripping you off in a business deal. This is the kind of neighbor that you want to deal with, that you want to have. A Muslim neighbor. You follow me? Who's good with Christians, Jews, everybody. But he worships the Creator, not the creation. And he stands on certain values and principles that are good for all of humanity. And if you're apologetically Muslim, how are people going to learn about Islam? How are they going to see the ambassadors of Islam? How are you going to convey the message, share the message? Especially in this growing hate epidemic. It's, a, it's so much manufactured hate and fear. The Islamophobia industry is a growing industry. Quarter of a million dollars is spent bashing Islam, attacking Islam. There's fire bombs. There are uh, bombs being thrown into mosques, vandalized masjids and women being attacked. Why? Because people's ignorance, because of the hate. So if you're apologetically Muslim, how are, they, how are you going to dispel many of these mis and mis misconceptions? So it's nice to, to see someone who's unapologetically Muslim who's helping to use that platform that they have and not shying away from the responsibility of someone who should be a great example as Muhammad Ali was, someone who people love to this day, all the athletes want to imitate. And hopefully with that responsibility and that role, we live up to that because God don't care about the UFC belts. God don't care about what kind of cars you drive. You follow me? He doesn't care of the color of your skin. He doesn't care about the wealth that you have. He cares about what's in your heart and your deeds, the good that you're going to accomplish while you're on this earth. And may God Almighty Allah continue to bless you, Mirsad, and everyone watching. If you have any questions, call us 1-800-662-ISLAM. Make the human connection. We're here to help. Erase any myths, misconceptions. We're here. Accept the invitation. Make the human connection and tune in every week to the Dean Show. See you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.